Today we're going to be looking at 1st Nephi chapter 8 verses 5 and 6 and it came to pass that I saw a man and he was dressed in a white robe and he came and stood before me and it came to pass that he spake unto me and bade me follow him. There's been a lot of controversy on who this guide really was who was guiding Lehi. We're going to talk about it today. Five reasons to believe Jehovah was Lehi's guide. Here are the five reasons that we're going to go over. We don't know a lot about this guide. We just have those two sentences. So we have to make a lot of inferences and connections to try to figure it out. So the first thing that we're going to look at is he was dressed in white. He said, come follow me. He never appears with any of the symbols or images of Jesus. The name of the Lord is used. And we're going to look at it as a possible continuation of 1st Nephi chapter 1 vision. It says, I saw a man who was dressed in a white robe. What are some other examples that we have of people saying this? And behold, they were as white as the countenance and also the garments of Jesus in 3rd Nephi. I beheld till the thrones were cast down and the Ancient of Days did sit whose garment was white as snow. Daniel sees a vision of Christ and sees white garments. His countenance was like lightning and his raiment was white as snow. This is the resurrected Savior. The only two white things in a vision, also to, to make note of, and this is symbolic in, in Hebrew writing, is they're going to make these connections with these adjectives. It's one thing, if you look at the adjectives, the words that they use to describe the nouns, those are often connectors to help you understand that the nouns mean the same thing. So the only two white things in the vision are the guide and the fruit. And we know symbolically that the fruit is the Savior. The second part of what we know about him from these verses is he spake unto me and bade me follow him. Who do we know throughout all eternity that says, come, follow me? That would be the Savior. Here are the references to the Savior saying, come, follow me. And he does the same thing to Lehi in his vision. It never appears in duplicity. So we're assuming that Nephi had the same experience in 1 Nephi 11, so we can look at that and learn more. But the guy disappears when the fruit appears, and the guy disappears when the Savior is born. Those times he says, look, and when Nephi looks, the guide is gone, and then he sees the birth of the baby Jesus. So he never appears at the same place twice. Number four, the name of the Lord. There's two options in Hebrew. The Old Testament was translated into Lord from two different Hebrew words. One was Yahweh, Yahweh or Jehovah. The other was Adonai, which means gods. So he's either speaking plurally of gods when he says Lord, or he's calling his name Jehovah. And number five, if we look at this as a continuation of 1st Nephi 1, where Lehi begins the vision, and never really gives us an ending other than he gets the book and reads that Jerusalem is going to be destroyed. And then he picks up seemingly in the middle where the guide is already there in chapter 8. I think this is a really interesting way to look at this, is, you know, Lehi was told his family initially at the beginning of the dream that Jerusalem is going to be destroyed, we need to get out of town. They get out of town, and then he goes through in detail and describes the rest of the vision. It says, that it came to pass that he saw one descending out of the midst of heaven, he, and he beheld that this, his luster was above that of the sun at noonday, and he also saw twelve others following him, and their brightness did exceed that of the stars of the firmament, and it came down and went forth upon the face of the earth, and the first king stood before my father. So if this is the beginning of the vision that Lehi had, I don't think there's any doubt that the person that Lehi was working with being escorted through this temple vision by was Jehovah. <laughs> 